Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 150 of Build Your Stash and Craft. So today we are going to be doing Ebrew painting, or marble painting on water, and this is going to be in two parts. They'll both come up today. This part is building everything, the tools that you'll need, and getting your paper ready, to do the actual painting and then the next one will be the actual painting. That way it won't be so long and if you want to go back and reference just the painting technique or how to build the tools, you don't have to watch the whole video to do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to prepare our paper. So the paper needs to be prepared so that when you lay your paper on the water, it grabs the paint and holds it because when you're done painting it, you're going to rinse it. And if you don't prepare your paper, when you rinse your paper, a lot of your um, color will wash right off. So, um, so what you need to do to prepare your paper is you need this elm, which is a pickling spice that you get at Walmart or any store. And you're going to need one cup of warm water and one tablespoon of elm. This one cup of water will do approximately 80 sh um, sheets of copy paper so you get you will wind up with a lot of you know if you enjoy doing this you will probably get four cups of water out of this one little thing of elm so you don't need to get yourself a lot because it it goes a long ways and then you're just going to stir that up until if I can find a stir stick here you're gonna stir it until the elm melts in the bottom. So, and it probably takes about a minute to get it all stirred in well. You wanna make sure that that, basically you're just kind of melting it in that warm water. And then, like I said, this will help your paint stick to your paper. And it doesn't matter what type of paper that you have. It's nice to have a bigger brush. This is just one of my favorite chip brushes. We did get a large brush in our Build Your Stash um, brushes at one point in time so just use use a larger brush just because it covers the paper faster you don't have to have a large brush it'll just take longer to cover your paper if you don't have one so we're just gonna keep stirring this until I can tell that it's melted we'll see if there's anything on the bottom I can still feel just a little bit of grit down there it's kind of like salt it's almost like rock salt and that's not what it is, but, you know, that's kind of the consistency of it. And um, so you can kind of feel those little grits on the bottom of your, your cup. Now, being that this is elm and it's just a pickling spice and water, um, I'm using a regular kitchen cup to do this. Because it's not anything that you, you know, are going to contaminate your, your cup with. So... And there we go. That's all nice and melted. And then all you're going to do is just take a piece of paper. And I've got some water on my table here. It's not going to make any difference because the paper's going to get wet anyways. But the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to take a pencil, which I had one sitting right on my paper just two seconds ago. Oh, well, we'll use this one over here. And you're going to put an X down in the bottom corner of your paper. And just go through and do that on all of them to start with and then then you're going to paint your paper you're going to this x will be on the back side of your paper so that when you go to use it you know which side has been painted with the elm and which side has not because it's really hard to tell so my x is here so i'm going to flip that upside down and this is the side that i'm going to paint i don't usually paint them one on top of another i just Put one down, and then I'm just going to put my brush in the paint, get it nice and wet, but not too dripping wet, so I'm just going to kind of touch the sides a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one way, and then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go the other way. That way you know that you have your paper covered. And the second way, you don't usually have to get your brush wet twice because the paper is already pretty wet. But what you're doing is you're just filling in, in any spots that maybe did not get covered the first time that you painted it. And then I just set it aside. I have a um, plastic tablecloth on my table. 
and I just line them up on my tablecloth and let them dry. They don't, surprisingly enough, they don't really take a super long time to dry, um, but they take a while. And then usually when they're pretty dry, I kind of pick them all up and then grab my heat tool, or actually I use my hair dryer. Um, and I just kind of blow, I have a stack of them and I just kind of blow on the side. Like I just hold them like this and kind of blow on the side and they kind of separate and get some air in there. And, um, and that just helps to make sure they're dry if you're gonna get ready to use them right away. If you're not using them right away, you don't even need to do that. But I get impatient sometimes. And um, so I do do that. But I let them dry first pretty much on their own. And then I just do that to make sure that they get that final really dryness. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm not going to do all 80 sheets because that would take forever and you're going to get bored. So I'm going to set those three sheets aside. Just a minute. I put one on top of the other and I don't want to do that because I don't want the back side of the one piece of paper to pull the elm off the front side of the other. So once you get all of your paper done, um, then we're going to make some tools. Let me just grab a napkin here that you can use for your marbling. Let me set this aside. And you know, you can buy tools for marbling, you can buy marbling kits, but um, you can also just make everything yourself. So to start with, we are going to make our combs. And so I just have a paper towel roll and I'm just gonna squash it. And just get two nice flat edges on it. And then I'm going to cut it in half. I get everything out, then I stack it all on top of each other. And I'm going to just cut it right down the middle. There, you don't have to measure it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want the two halves. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to mark it. This one I'm going to do every three quarters of an inch. And I'm doing that because I already have one that's a half an inch. And I also have one that I made that is a quarter of an inch. I find that that is a little bit too small. Okay, so we're going to do three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, three, three and three quarters, four and a half, five and a quarter, and six, six, so six and three quarters, seven and a half, eight and a quarter, and nine. And that's about how wide my, you want your comb to be as wide as your um, cookie sheet or whatever, whatever utensil you're going to use to hold your water. So I'm just gonna stop right there and then I'll just cut this end off. And that should probably be about long enough. Let me see. Yep, that's good. Okay, and then we're going to just take our pokey tool and we're going to poke holes where we just made all of those marks. And then we're going to stick a skewer through them. Now, you can just stick, try and stick the skewer through it, but to me, it's harder to do, and um, and just don't poke yourself. But what I'm gonna do is those, I made the little dots right in the fold. That's where we're going to poke all of our holes, is right in the fold. And you can put your little pokey pad behind this and poke through it. If you're gonna hold it like this, um, just make sure that you have your finger out of the way so you don't poke your finger. And I'm just going to poke each one, and then we're going to put, now the right where your paper towel like comes in two layers, it's harder to poke right there. I'm going to kind of turn this around so that I don't make the end too flimsy. And there we go. Then we're going to take some skewers, and we're going to just put them in there. 
and let them stick out probably about a couple of inches. There is no specific amount that you need because all you need is the, you don't even really, you don't need the depth of your water. If you were to do this in a tub of some sort, you know, like those wash tubs or whatever, um, you definitely don't need your, your comb to be as long as, as that tub is deep. So you just need a little bit so that it goes through the color on top of the water and and breaks the paint so that so that you move it around with your comb and that's what these are for this is what makes your marbling effect when you put the paint on your water Let's see we need four more of these And there we go. Now we're going to take our little, um, the really cheap wire cutters that we got, not our jewelry ones, um, and we are just going to nip these off. First, we're going to line them up. Just going to kind of grab my ruler and just kind of make sure that they're all about the same. And they don't have to be perfect. You just want them to all be about the same length. Because I do like to run mine across the bottom of my cookie sheet. And so it's it's easier if they're all about the same length. There, so that looks pretty good right there. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to nip them off. Now you can also just cut them. How long is this? From the point to the outside edge of the... Um, let's, let's go here from the point to the outside edge of our paper towel roll it's three and a quarter inches what you could do is go through and cut all of your skewers at three and a quarter of inches right away which actually um, is what I did the first time now when you go to cut this you need to hang on to this part of the skewer or it will go flying so just hang on to that which I and actually you have to like make sure you don't just put your fingers on it make sure you actually hang on to it because the other ones are kind of um, locked into your paper towel holder they don't they're not going to tend to go flying as much as these loose ones are and we're going to use these so don't get rid of them after you cut them we're going to use the part that we just cut off Now that we've got that done, like I said, it would have been easier to go ahead and cut them first because then once you lined them up, they wouldn't you wouldn't have to do it again. There. Those look pretty good. Like I said, they don't have to be exact. That's definitely going to break the water and go to the bottom. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put glue in there and put it under a heavy book, but I have to grab the glue because I took it. I've been working on this for about a week and a half now, and um, I keep stealing all the little supplies I had set aside to do it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I get glue underneath where those skewers are. Kind of move them over and put some glue on there and then we're going to put it in the middle too because we want the paper towel roll to stick also to itself and i'm just going to flip it over so i can do the other side so basically we just need to get glue all over the whole thing there's no trick to it there's no special right or wrong way no you guys quiet peewee Ollie. And then you're just going to squash it together. And you do want to straighten them out. You want them to be straight. That's more important than them being the same length, is that they all are straight up and down. Like 
that. So there we go. Now we have them all straight. And I have a heavy book. I'm going to just put this underneath of a heavy book. And that will hold it all together. Now it's okay right now to let it go because that glue is not going to dry that fast. I will show you the other combs that I've already made. So this is a half inch comb and this one is a three quarter inch comb. And then this one that I made, this one is a quarter of an inch comb and I used toothpicks. This one I find to be a little too close together. So, um, you know, once you have tried it and you decide if you like it or not, you may want to make one of these. But it just, you, you have to move much slower the closer they are together because you don't want to lose your pattern. And, and it really makes the pattern very, very tiny, where these make the pattern larger. And you'll see what we're talking about when we paint. So, but it would be good um, for you to have when you're ready to play, have a three quarter inch and a half an inch. If you only want to make one, make a half an inch and that will work out really well. Alrighty, so I am going to set this over here. I'm just making sure that I have it straight. I wanted to make sure that I had it straight before I put the book on top of it. So those are our combs and we've got our paper ready. And then the next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need little brushes to tap your color onto the surface of your water. And that's where this comes in. So we're just going to take our scissors and then we're going to cut these off. In just a minute I have to grab I need to grab a lighter. I've used this one all up. So I'm going to be right back. Okay, I'm back. So what we're going to do is we're going to just grab one set of these little strands. And if you have something like this, you don't have to do this. If you have a bunch of fan brushes or something, you don't have to do this because fan brushes work very well. Um, and then we're going to just melt this together and give it a squish with our silicone spatula. And it doesn't matter if they're flat or if they're round, it doesn't matter. So just melt it a little bit and then give it a squish. Don't burn yourself. You just wanna melt those together so that they stay together. So that looks pretty good. Let's just set that aside. And we're going to do six of those. I'm not going to answer it because it's probably a telemarketer. Whoops, I cut some off of somewhere else. And again then, we're just going to just melt it and give it a squish. That seems pretty well put together. And um, I do six because then you've got enough for six different colors. You really don't have to have that. I don't know that, well, yeah, I usually do use quite a few colors all at once. <laughs> That's why I buy regular lighters for my crafty stuff, because these big ones, I see everybody craft with them, but I have a hard time getting it to light. And those seem to be pretty well put together. We'll just do one more, and then I'll do the other couple off the camera, because we don't need to do all of them. So now this one is cool. 
I'm just going to kind of fold it in half just a little bit just because I made it really really flat I want to glue it I want to glue it to the end of our skewer that's what this is the skewer that we cut the points off of for our combs so I'm going to glue it to the end of this so I just kind of like fold it just a little bit so that it kind of has that shape in mind before I put the glue on it and then we're going to use our fix it all adhesive and we're going to glue them together and we're going to let them sit overnight now that's the bad part about it but like I said, if you've got a little fan brush or something, you know, you can try this. And then if you decide that you like it and you want to have quite a few, um, then you can, you can make them. And you don't have to buy a bunch of fan brushes. And I'm putting this on parchment paper so that it does not stick. Again, I'm just going to kind of give that a little bit of a fold. Put a little glue on it. Now with this, it says to... Put your glue on both halves of your project, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then put the two pieces together. So that is how I do it. I'm just putting the glue on here, and then I'm going to put the glue on the skewers and let them all just sit here on my paper for 10 minutes, and then I will just touch the skewer to this and then let them set overnight. So then I'm just going to put some on the skewer. So I need four of them. And I just rolled that one over, so I kind of want to try and pick that glue back up. There we go. I got it back on the skewer. And I'm just putting a little dab of it. It doesn't have to be a whole ton. And, and it does kind of run off a little bit. That's not a huge deal either. So long as you've got glue on each piece when you put them together. So there we go. And then when I'm done, and then after 10 minutes, I will just take this one and this one, and I will just put them together and then I normally let them sit for about another 10 minutes, just sitting on my thing. And then I come back and I kind of squish this up around here. And just kind of give it a little bit of a squish. And after about that long, it kind of tends to want to stay. And then I set it on my paper. And so long as they stay together, it doesn't matter if it's wrapped around or anything. As a matter of fact, if when I, when I do these, if I don't squish them flat, um, I kind of hold them in a little ball and do it. And then I just stick them right on the very end of the skewer. Like, like this one here. This one was round when I melted it. and um, But when you press it with this, it gets flat. So when it gets flat, then you're just going to do it this way. If it comes out round, then you just put glue on each end and then just put them together. And that really does hold pretty good. I've used this quite a few times and it's still holding together. It doesn't want to pull apart. That's why we're using this glue because they're going to get wet. And so you want to make sure that you've got a nice, if you're going to make the tools, you want them to last you for a long time. So once we have those made, take this off for a second and let those glues dry separately. Maybe pick up just a little bit more glue over here where it fell off of this one. Pick up a little bit of this glue here. There we go. So we'll set this aside. So these are paint flickers. I guess that's what you could call them. And then we're going to make some paint brushes. So for the paint brushes, you're going to need some yarn about an inch long. Just like four pieces, about an inch long. And then you're going to take one of your skewers and you're going to use your glue and you're going to put that yarn onto your skewer. It doesn't need to be long. You only want it to stick down about an inch 
or maybe three quarters of an inch. It doesn't need to stick down very far. And so I just go ahead and I just put this glue up here about a quarter of an inch onto my skewer. And then I just take my yarn and just kind of put it on four sides of the skewer. Making sure that it's all about the same length at this end. And like I said, you want it to stick down about three quarters of an inch or so. And so I just kind of press that on there. I don't do the put put it on both pieces and let it sit for 10 minutes, mostly just because of the fact that it's too hard to try and put it on the yarn. It just kind of wants to stick and peel your yarn away. And so we're going to do that. And we're just going to, this looks funny, but that's okay. Just leave it. Set it on your parchment because that glue could stick to something and then let that dry overnight. And you wanna have two or four of these. So um, so we have our brushes and we have our little flickers and we have our um, combs. And so that is what, those are the things that we are going to need. We have our paper painted and yeah, that's it. So this is what we need to do to prepare. And then the next video is going to show you how to use these tools and paint on water. So I will be back with the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye. Okay, I have one quick insert on another way to make your brushes. And what we're going to do is we are going to get just one strand of yarn that's going to be a little bit longer than the others. I've got my scissors here. And then we're going to put some glue just right on the very, just like the bottom eighth of an inch, just, just right on the bottom here. Because we want to take this one strand of yarn and just kind of center it right on the stick. Just kind of going to push the stick kind of into the yarn a little bit and get that yarn to go up there and catch and then just kind of roll it on there and I'll let that set a little bit for it to dry a little bit and then I'll come back and press it again just to make sure that it gets a good hold and now this one is a little longer than than these are so um, and then these ones also, after they sit a little bit, go ahead and go back and just kind of press on them a little bit to make sure that they're, you know, just making good contact with that glue. We want them to be nice and solid because they're going to get, they're going to get very wet because they are going to soak up our paint, right? And they'll soak it all the way right up to the stick. So you want to make sure that you press those on good every so often until they are good and dry. So, but these are different than this one. So we're going to do this one like this. And then I'm going to try it on its own, but I don't think it's going to soak up enough paint. But being that this is right in the center, then I'm going to, when this dries, then I'm going to put four on it just like we did this. And they're going to be a little shorter than this. And that way, that will soak up all of the paint, but we'll have a nice little single kind of point right in the center. So that's what we're going to try with these. I haven't tried it yet. I just thought of it as I was finishing up, you know, doing all the brushes. And so I thought we'd try. So I wanted to give an addition just in case this works great so that you would have the way to make this also. So again, we made it just like this. We're going to let it dry. After it dries, we're going to put glue around here, put our four pieces around exactly like we did this, and then let that dry. And again, go in and make sure that we give that glue a quick little rub every so often just to make sure that it all is sticking really well and and again 24 hours for these to dry because you really want them to be nice and dry and sturdy then they'll last you a very long time so okay wanted to add that quick addition thanks again see you in a bit